I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Thursday, August the 31st. A lot of months go by quick. August took forever to go by. It seemed like it to me. Brought to you in part by Macrosin by Vimeda, a bold telethromycin injection. Proven efficacy at an affordable upfront price without any BS. End of story. For more information, go to macrosin.com. Cattle harvest declines. And uh, we've been talking about how the Packers have really put the brakes on the chain speeds here of late, uh, trying to keep the price back whenever in a, in a really short supplies of market ready cattle. Of course, right now, here for a few weeks, uh, we seem to, to be in a little spot where we've got a few more uh, market ready cattle, uh, but then it's going to tail off big time. But they're just doing everything they can uh, to keep from raising the price. Uh, for cash fat cattle because of course they have all those formulas uh, that are based off of those so they got to keep those down and, and try to control that as much as they can but uh, we've seen uh, your harvest decline quite a bit already uh, your year to date uh, harvest is down 4.2 percent that's pretty significant when you're talking about how tight everything runs from what we harvest or what we grow, what we feed, what we harvest, what we eat, uh, what we export and all that. Uh, down 4.2 is, is pretty good. But I was uh, looking at the daily livestock report released by CME, which I uh, try to look at every day. They had some information from Livestock Marketing Information Center, so this is third hand. But uh, I thought I'd share it with you. They are forecasting that your year-over-year -year decline from already down this year, they're saying in 2024, uh, they expect our uh, slaughter to be down 7.5% compared to this year's already uh, lower numbers. And then in 2025, to be down another 5.3% compared to that big drop-off in 2024. Now that's not much meat guys but our, our numbers are down so much you know that's all they can do because uh, we're just in a, in a cycle where we're at the bottom of our uh, of our supplies then those have been exacerbated by extreme drought in, in major production areas and things like that but you know that is total cattle uh, your cows typically are roughly 20 percent of your slaughter uh, the rest are going to be steers and heifers for the most part. Uh, your cow uh, percentage of that total is starting to decline also because we are running out of cows. We have culled really deep here the last two or three years because of those bad droughts. And uh, now we're just about out of cows. Uh, and I can't understand why the cow market isn't already better than what it is. We do have competition in cows. They buy them in every sale barn in the country all across the land. Uh, but uh, I fully expect uh, these cow uh, availability to get tighter and uh, figure those best cows to be worth a buck and a half here uh, within the next couple of months there. But they're going to be getting some big strings off of some ranches whenever they ship their calves. Uh, so they'll be getting them direct for the most part there. Uh, but uh, th it's, it's going to be really tight on cows. Of course, that's easier for your packers to import uh, meat for grinding as uh, your cows are mostly hamburger meat or ground beef there uh, so uh, it's easier for them to fill in there uh, on uh, on getting uh, imports in from other countries especially Brazil especially since two of our big four packers are Brazilian owned but uh, been really light uh, here lately on your slaughter and uh, they're expecting about 620,000 this week Typical is about 650 or better. Uh, here a couple of weeks ago, they were down as low as 603. That's down uh, the most uh, decline that we've seen all year so much. So uh, we'll likely see the, uh, the slaughter decline a little bit more going forward here. Uh, your feeder cattle in, in your sale barn spiked big time uh, on Wednesday here. And we saw a good market there. Not seeing a whole lot of yearlings moving. Not seeing a whole lot of cattle of any kind moving. Uh, because most of the uh, cattle that were sold uh, for immediate delivery uh, here over the last month, they've been shipped and just not much showing up in the sale barns. 
uh, feedlots. Uh, of course, most of them got uh, pretty good numbers in them. They just want to fill up in here, fill up in there. They've got to go out to the sale barns to do that. But uh, with the extreme heat last week, we just didn't see much at all happening uh, in your sale barns. But we're going to get to that. And I'm going to impress you uh, with some big sale barn quotes here towards the end of the report. But it's the last day of the month. Time to award the Punchy Pick of the Month uh, winner. And uh, if you guys don't know about this, you don't watch this report very often, uh, we ask our listeners to send in a punchy pick, just something that happens out in their daily life uh, that looks punchy to them, cowboy to them, tough to them. Uh, just uh, click it with your phone. Uh, send it to us at punchy at nationalbeefwire.com and we'll enter you into a contest. Uh, the winner of today and every month's contest going to get lots of cool swag from beaver feed and beaver oklahoma and the beaver county stockyards i'm, I'm going to beaver county stockyards here uh, early this next week and uh, i've got to get me another cap they've got the coolest caps in the business and uh, mine's wore out or too dirty and then every time i wash them then they don't look right so i have to get me a new one i bet jeff slatton will help me out there but uh, a bunch of cool swag from Beaver Feed and Beaver County Stockyards, and then a whole case of Therapiece, that revolutionary product that uh, takes the anxiety out of these calves uh, whenever you're trying to wean them or you're moving them or doing anything stressful. It's just a topical product there, uh, and it is changing the industry, guys. Getting a lot of devotionals uh, about that. That's talking about how what a great uh, job they're doing. But let's talk about your punchy pick of the month. Uh, winners. I've got to give our kids honorable mention. Uh, and not that a, a kid pick wouldn't win that, but we get lots of cute kid picks. Uh, but uh, most of them aren't as punchy as what we want for the winner. But i got to give some credit to Chad Ladd from Madisonville, Kentucky. Uh, and this is his grandson, Jameson. And look at the punchy rig this kid's got now. Wow. I mean, it's too bad he can't drive that to school. Uh, he's got his pony tied up there to a single axle trailer. It looks like he's ready to go take care of some cattle somewhere. Uh, those cows in the background are, are, are looking at him. They don't have anything to worry about, I wouldn't think, for a few years. Uh, but if any of those cows are still around in about 10 years, uh, better watch out. That cowboy might be after them. Uh, so now we'll go on to our third place uh, punchy pick, and that is Bart Lawrence from Pottsboro, Texas. Now you know it's hot when you're up in North Texas and you got a cow that's in the pond and, and pretty far up in the pond but uh, still not happy with just being in the pond has to go out to the middle of that pond and get under that little bridge there seeking shade and pond. Now that's pretty punchy. I thought that was a cool picture there. Uh, now we'll go to our second place winner uh, and that's Kyle Castor from Bentonville, Arkansas. And this uh, is not from this last week, I'll guarantee you. This is from a, a winter a year or two back there uh, where he had the ice on, on the creek there and, uh, and the cattle got out on that. They'll do that when it gets cold and wintry like that and, and then they'll break through the ice. So he had two yearling steers uh, that broke through the ice and uh, they were pretty well preserved. There was nothing wrong with them. He decided to get the kayak out uh, bust through the ice like the Titanic, go out there and latch onto those steers and float them out of there by paddling. That's pretty punchy, guys, uh, on that kayak and brought them out of there and they went in there and, and uh, harvested them and, and got the meat out of them that they could, which that's good that they didn't waste those steers uh, if they had to die that way. But the punchy pick of the month, grand prize winner this month, is Jack Payne from Fallon, Nevada. He, uh, he went to unload some cattle out uh, on the ranch, did not have a, a proper unloading chute, uh, and that old truck that he's got as uh, a pot and a pup, uh, and way out west, those were popular. You still don't see them very often anymore, but they've got a, a side gate on them, and he pulled up to this old bobtail truck, jumped them out, onto the bed of that uh, bobtail truck. It's kind of hard to see. You've got to look at what I'm telling you. He jumped him out of the out of the pot trailer onto the bobtail truck and then had the side gate on the bobtail truck open where they could jump down to the ground without crippling one. That's pretty punchy, guys. 
and he's going to get the grand prize for this month. Uh, let's talk about your board on Wednesday. August live cattle futures down two dollars and twenty cents at one seventy eight eighty. October down a buck forty two at one eighty oh five. Your back months were all down from a dollar twelve to a dollar sixty five. Feeders were also down here. Remember at the start of the week they were up and nobody could figure out why and they thought, oh my gosh, this thing's going to take off again. I didn't have any faith in it. Uh, and most of the time I don't. If it goes up earlier in the week, uh, you just know it's going to go down later in the week. But August feeder cattle, and that's the one that's got to meet up with your cash feeder cattle index here uh, right now. And it was down 65 cents at 250.05. Doesn't look like uh, we're going to get the CME index up to 250 here uh, this week. But that's uh, that August feeder cow is going back in uh, to that parking spot, and there's no trade in it at all anyway. But September feeder cattle down a buck 40 at 252.62. Your back months on feeder cattle down a dollar 12 to down a dollar 52, and grains were down too. New crop December corn down six cents at 480 and three quarters. November beans down five and three quarters cent, 1386 and three quarters. Kansas City hard red winter wheat for September was actually up after being down big on Tuesday, but up four, uh, four, four and three quarters cent at 719 and a quarter. Talk about your fat cattle trade, which still has not developed on a direct basis, guys. Uh, seeing a little bit of trade here and there, but it's mostly all been in Iowa. Uh, I'd heard some, I feel a little bit of trade in Nebraska, but it must have been a negotiated tr uh, grid off of last week's market. It was not anything new. Uh, did not uh, get reported on your uh, negotiated sales by USDA's uh, mandatory price reporting, but Iowa sold 1,800 on Wednesday, 3,200 head for the week. Uh, your live sales on Wednesday, or 184 to 186 uh, live and 290 dressed. So it's going to be a pinch weaker, it looks like, in the Northern Plains anyway. Uh, Nebraska and Kansas had no sales. Texas sold a couple of hundred at last week's uh, market, which would be steady at 179. Did have a brick and mortar sale of pretty good size. Sioux Falls Regional Livestock, Worthing, South Dakota, sold fat cattle on Wednesday. Uh, the, the basic uh, conventional cattle uh, and they didn't have a trend really because a week ago it was extremely hot and they didn't have enough to set the market but it's a lower undertone uh, conventional cattle from 178 to 186.50 uh, and a few program cattle non-implanted or drug-free cattle from 183 to 188 all those uh, quotes that I've given you there on your fat cattle a little bit of trade we've seen this week are steady to weak uh, maybe a buck lower here and there. Box beef cutout values uh, were kind of mixed on Wednesday. Choice cuts were up 75 cents at 315.11. Remember, we started out the week at uh, 317 plus. But uh, your selects down 15 cents at 289.53. Slaughter keeping up pretty good this week. Uh, we talked all about uh, in the opening about how our slaughter's been down so much. But this particular week, it's been up pretty good. Uh, they're kind of getting ready because they know next week is a holiday week and they're going to have a uh, light slaughter for that. They must have immediate needs to fill because they're pushing pretty good this week. 375000 up through the first three days of this week. That's 9000 more than last week at this time. Just 2000 less than the same week a year ago. If uh, you guys are having a hard time finding a lender uh, to cover your needs and financing cattle, uh, get a hold of them at Legend Bank. Legend Bank is fast and efficient cattle financing. Uh, and you get a hold of them and contact Greg Brooks or Ricky Taylor. They understand the cattle business. They understand the markets. They understand the hedging. They understand the LRPs. They're doing that stuff all the time, guys. They are the top cattle lenders in North Texas, but they can help you in all of Oklahoma and all of Texas. If you need a lender for cattle that know what's going on, it's so frustrating when they don't. But uh, Legend Bank is a member of FDIC. All of their loans are subject to credit approval, and they are equal housing lender. Uh, get a hold of them at legend.bank. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction. 
late in the day on Wednesday, sitting at 246.92. That was up 14 cents. So uh, saw pretty good games there uh, on Tuesday's RTI. Wednesday's a little bit stronger, and we had some really impressive quotes there. Uh, but it's about squeezed all it can, and that's the average of a seven to 899 pound steers, usually averaging right in there around 800 pounds. Like I said, your CME cash feeder cattle index fell back just a little at 249.15, and it does have to settle uh, your cash settled August feeder cattle contract on the CME uh, right here at the end of this week. Let's talk about your big sales on Wednesday. OKC West, El Reno, Oklahoma, 9,600 head. Feeder steers two to four bucks higher. Feeder heifers steady to two bucks higher. Weaned calves were fully steady. And we're just going to see that uh, it's going to be hard to call non weaned calves, especially when it's still hot like this, because nobody really wants them. Yes, they do have a value. Yes, somebody that's set up and knows how to do that, uh, straighten those unweaned ballers up, they can find value in them. That's your opportunity if you guys can do it. But uh, no, they're not going to get in there and push the market on those kinds. Uh, El Reno was your national beef wire stick out sale of the day. This is just a Wednesday feeder sale. They sold calves on Tuesday, uh, but largely feeders on Wednesday. And you look at your uh, bigger feeder cattle and your best tested weights there at OKC West. You see 1,220 head of seven weight steers. They average 757 pounds at 249.15. 2,031 head of eight weight steers. Where else are you going to go and see that many, guys? Uh, they averaged 852 pounds. Weighted average price, 237.98. 851 head of nine weight steers. Average 955. Weighted average price on those, 220.86. How about the heifers? 829 head of six weight heifers. Average 638 at 249.37. 805 head of seven weight heifers, average 754 pounds, 232.62 on the weighted average price, and 593 head of eight weight heifers in El Reno, Oklahoma, at an average weight, weighted average weight of 830 pounds, weighted average price 223.60. Give you several individual quotes all around. How about South Central Regional Stockyards? That's one of my favorite sale barns, the Patton family. Uh, really good people there. If you don't know them, you need to get to knowing them. Uh, they can sell uh, fancy calves high. 60 head of steer calves, weight 641 pounds, bring 285.60. How about Wright County Livestock Market? One of our newer broadcast uh, family members there. Uh, you can watch them on DV Auction every week. They're out of Mountain Grove, Missouri. 352 head. Look at that long string in South Missouri. 352 of them. They were just mixed steers, commodity cattle. Uh, and had a weight of 782 pounds, bring 243.70. How about Cherokee Sales Company in Cherokee, Oklahoma? Had a good sale on Wednesday. 111 head of 1,000 pound steers, bring 234. But the most impressive quote, the most impressive sale by far that I've seen for quite some time uh, was in Bloomfield, Iowa. It was the Bloomfield Livestock Market. I believe it's the highest brick and mortar uh, yearling feeder cattle sale that we've seen ever so far. Of course, you know, it may be a higher one today, but on Wednesday in Bloomfield, uh, Iowa, they sold 572 head of eight weight steers. Most of them in loads. Uh, they had an average of 848 pounds and a weighted average price on nearly 600 of them of 259.34. Wow. And they also had your Macrosin No BS. Top quote for the day was 65 steers, weighed 810 pounds at 269.60. Congratulations to the Schooley family. That's your feeder flash for Thursday.